before I came here, I think people who feel here is kind of, they are all genius. But we are know. here. <laughs> but, but <laughs> okay, I know that you have a video saying watching Friends wasn't like a good show. I think that show maybe like really helped me. I mean like, and people don't really care about accent too much, but I definitely have a very strong Asian accent. We have a really cool project called Data Match. You put your preferences like onto an online floor, and then they will use algorithm to pair you with someone for a friendship or for a dating. I tried, but it was just for pure friendship. What's up, guys? Laura, hello, I'm Matt. So today I'm here to Harvard. 要跟这边的中国留学生聊一聊，看看他们英文水平怎么样，然后问问有没有什么考上哈佛的秘诀想跟大家分享，也许对我们所有人都有帮助。So let's go. I'm a second year master student majoring in computational science and engineering. I'm a PhD student in psychology. Material science major. I'm majoring in computer science and biology. We are both in landscape architecture. I study government, like political science. Where did you go to, to undergrad? Beijing University. Of civil engineering and architecture, Basically. not picking university. Oh, okay. It's actually, different. <laughs> my undergrad is University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, I didn't take Gaokao because I get my offer before um, Gaokao that year. So Sorry luckily, that. Um, I was from Peking University, so that's Beida. What high school did you go to? It's a high school attached to Tsinghua University. You suck. What did you get on the golf course? A little above 690. What did you get on the GRE? 320. 323. So it's 335. Uh, I mean, for math, it's for, of course four score. For the verbal thing, I mean, what's the basic line? 130 is the lowest, yeah. Yes, 130, that is. <laughs> Uh, I said I would say it's not too bad, but definitely not reached the average of Harvard students. It's 15:30. So, how did you get into Harvard? I guess. Oh, yeah. What do you so, think uh, made you stand out? As an undergraduate student, uh, of course, you need to doing well in your regular courses, GPA basically. Yeah. You need to have very good research experience. I joined a lab back in University of Science and Technology of China since I'm a sophomore year. Uh, you need to know edge cutting knowledge for those researchers. Work well in the lab and bring something new for the lab, then be admitted to any university among this earth. <laughs> so since uh, sophomore year, I've been doing research uh, related to autistic children, which is like uh, kind of like my interest since like high school. And then I joined that lab have a strong interest in it and I also publish like papers as a first author. I think design is kind of my passion. I'm willing to devote my time into it. I can only speak about PhD applications. I think the most important thing is like the statement and the recommendation letters. So for me, I feel like I had a pretty concrete research plan. My research interest matched my advisor pretty well. Very luckily, like my recommenders spoke very highly of me. I'm not legally okay to share it because oh. like Harvard said you can't share it with anyone oh, else. Yeah. But like I can give a general sense of like what Harvard really value from their students. They truly care, care about your personality. I know this sounds fake. Like how can you know what personality? How can you know like what kind of students you are when you're in high school? But it's actually very real. Like you can show your identity and personality through the things you did in high school, through like the essay you wrote for Harvard, through the scores, the competitions, all the time devotions you put in. And I think they truly matter. Taking classes here, do you ever struggle with the language? I think, yeah, but our instructors, they understand us. They will listen to us very patiently. It's kind of hard concentrated on a lecture, especially a big lecture. Mm -hmm. The professor just continue to say something. Definitely in terms of like speaking fluency, I've definitely improved a lot. Like after like communicating with friends and also speaking up in lectures, that makes you more like confidence than in terms of like speaking English. In academic writing, I definitely feel sometimes it's harder for me to write sentences that are really, you know, fancy and to polish my language, it's like a long way to go, I think. I mean like, and people don't really care about accent too much, but I definitely have a very strong Asian accent. I mean, I don't relatively, there's no. definitely, I mean, there's no. definitely, <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> a lot of people say like learning a new language is learning a new way to think, and I think that's definitely true. If you get admitted to an undergraduate program, everyone gets their English improved because they speak English from day to day, every time. That's mm -hmm. why my English is such a broken thing. When I first came here, I would say like most of English, I haven't really practiced in a native speaker environment. Yeah. So right now it's much better. Also learn lots of slides and the informal ways of texting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I use lots of abbreviations. I think that helps a lot. Yeah. Your English is phenomenal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to fool people. I'm telling them from Oklahoma, but... How did you get your English to this level? 
Okay, I know that you have a video saying watching Friends wasn't like a good show. But then the problem is like I got interested in like other shows, like variety shows, other than just like English shows. So I think there was a lot of references to uh, cultural icons. I think through time, being able to communicate using some of the sketches from SNL was like a big part of like me understanding a lot of like humor, like how they use humor in the US. I think also like practicing speaking to yourself. I mean also like speaking to yourself actually just helps you like with mental health. I mean people are gonna think you're a weird or something, but I mean it, it helped me. Hello guys, we're now slowly turning a little bit. I want to thank our sponsor today's sponsor, which is Lao Ma English. I'm going to launch a free business training class on the 25th of June, 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 一个方面呢，怎么节省时间？这样呢，我们可以把大部分精力都花在我们真正增值的，可以帮我们事业生涯，真的再上一层楼的这些工作上。If you want to learn, uh, check out 老马英语微信公众号，还有老马英语点 com 啊，都可以帮我们参加。Let's go back to the video. Do you think that you study harder now than you did in high school? No. Nope. Well, I think I study much harder than my high school. He's very good at design. I'm not. Definitely not. <laughs> I think I study I'm more smart now when it comes to like choosing what I want to study, but I don't think I study as hard as I did before. During high school, you are not really doing something you like. You just keep doing those repeating things without knowing new things. I mean, actually, for for me, it's it's a little bit different because I took the chemistry Olympiad. So for my third year, I don't really have that high pressure. Okay. So I took most of my time reading from Wang Zhenqi, from uh, Mo Yan, Yu Hua. At Harvard, I think it's more about like a journey where you take your own control initiative to explore. Right now, I just have like the freedom of doing what I want to do. Teachers are usually there to answer questions, and you have to be able to like ask good questions. Well, the challenging part is you need to create. Passion is very important. I feel like I'm like motivated to do stuff. You want to know yeah. something hidden in this world, so you go search for it and try something. Of course, you fail like 99%. Doing those. Failures also very valuable. Any final advice for you know the Chinese students or going to apply? Or what they want to do? Half or something? Want to apply? Half or something? I think I'm resilient. But I'm saying resilient is not resilient every day. But I'm saying that there is something that you can do every day. I think American universities they really focus on diversity. Yeah. So they want you to show something different from others. Different university or college have like their own vibe. If they get to know more Harvard students. And ask them about like what courses are there in Harvard or like what's the um, non-academic life. It would be better for them. And there are like so many resources and like they can watch YouTube or like other videos online. It's, it's definitely much better compared with like you know when I when I applied. I think people really need to focus on themselves, discover their own true passion, um, keep their own passion, pay attention to their own passion, and work to pursue their own passion. 自己的目标努力而奋斗，无论是考上哈佛大学还是考上任何一所大学，我觉得努力永远是对自己最好的回答。我觉得建议还是一样吧，就是找到自己的兴趣，找到自己喜欢做的事情，努力把事情做好。至于就是 end up where， 不是说我特别努力，我就一定可以去到我想去到的地方。Of course， 这也在 imply， 就是 Harvard is should not be like where everyone wants to go， right？ It's it's just like You should go to where you want to go, not be constrained by the name, the brand. <laughs> yeah, a lot of titles. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is the first video of the first interview of Harvard. The content is a little bit more, so there will be a second part, including their life in Harvard, and the expectations of future salary. 每天刷手机的时间有多少？等等等等，所以一定要关注啊，求三连。然后就是还是非常感谢坐下来跟我聊的那些人。然后关于上半期的这个视频，我想说，你们可能就会发现啊，进入哈佛的这些学生，并不一定是那种真正的天才啊，他们其实和我们没太多的不同，只是他们可能知道自己喜欢什么，他们的激情所在，他们想要什么，并且呢，他们就是未知。坚持啊，坚持真的就是胜利。试问一下，就是这些听起来很简单的，大家每天都挂在嘴边的，我们真的都能做到吗？反正如果你想提高英语这一块儿，那关注我肯定不会错。我这边就会分享各种小技巧啊，有这些英语分析。然后如果有什么特别困难的想了解的，随时就可以跟我说。And see you in the next video. Peace.